Hello my dear students, your professor is back with the next Bioshua short series. So welcome to this first Animal Delight Tutions. Have a cheerful day my dear kiddos. Okay, today I'm here for discussing one of the interesting questions from the chapter named How do organisms reproduce? Before moving on to that 90 plus sure shot question, we can recollect the mark distribution for the upcoming CBSC 10th grade 2024 examination. And you know, as you know, there are there are different two units uh, for the biology. The first unit is unit 2, that is world of living, which comes at, under this category of the unit 2, that is world of living, life processes, control and cultivation, how do organs reproduce and heredity chapters are there. And all together this from this chapter, we will be getting 25 marks in our upcoming board examination of the 2024. But when it comes to the last unit, that is unit 5, natural resources, in this chapter, we only have one chapter for studying and the if you're studying the all concepts of the our environment chapter, you will be able to get five marks from this chapter. Together, 25 plus five, that is 30 marks, will get from the biology station. So don't miss any of the concepts of the biology because biology studies are very important. Most of the topics or most of the questions and most of the answers will definitely, sorry, most of the answers, it's not most of the answers, most of the marks will definitely get from the biology station when you are combining the physics and chemistry because the more weighted is for the biology, that is 30 marks. Okay, so don't miss any of the concepts of the biology. Don't skip any of the concepts of the biology. Here we go with the chapter number seven that is how do organisms reproduce we are going to blast the sugar question series from the 90 plus my tuition so stay tuned with 90 plus my tuition don't forget to subscribe our channel for receiving all interesting videos so here we are going to the next question from the how do organisms reproduce chapter and this question is for three months and the question is in flowering plants the pollen grains are transferred to the stigma by pollination even we know that but the female germ cells are present in the ovary right Explain with the help of a labeled diagram only concerned parts how the male germ cells reaches the ovary. That means in this question, we know the concepts actually, but you have to draw the labeled diagram as well as the explanation to with respect that label diagram is also needed, otherwise, you will not get full marks. That is three months. For getting three months, labeled diagram is essential and explanation part of the label diagram is also mandatory. And before moving on to the answer to this direct question. We need to recollect all the reproductive parts and all the structures which are involved in the reproduction in the flowering plants or angiosperms. As we know, the flowers are the reproductive organs in a plant. We know that there are two kinds of flowers, unisexual flowers and bisexual flowers. And unisexual flowers are the flowers which only having, uh, which only having either male or female reproductive system in a flower. That means both me, male and female reproductive systems are located in the entire different flower. And what do I mean by bisexual flower? The classical example for the bisexual flower is a hibiscus. In the bisexual flower, as the name implies, both male and female reproductive parts or organs are located or will be located in the same flower. Here we are going to discuss the major reproductive and non-reproductive part of our hibiscus flower. Rain, sir, you can play the animation. Here is a hibiscus flower. And now we are moving on to the first part of the non-reproductive part of the flower. You know the bottom greenish part. And which bottom greenish part is simply called? You can play that, sir. The this bottom greenish part is simply called the sepal, and which is also a non-reproductive part of the flower. And you will be able to see the petals, and which are colored parts. You can uh, continue the animation, and the colored most attractive part of this flower, which is called petals, and petals and sepals, which are the which are the non-reproductive parts of the flower. Now we are moving on to the reproductive parts of the flower. You can play the animation. Here you will be able to see a filament-like structure, which is the filament. At the top of the filament, you can you will be able to see a angle-like structure. So you can play. And this is the filament, and you will be able to see at the top of the filament there will be anther. This inside the anther there will be pollen grains. And this anther plus filament constitute the male reproductive part of the flower. And the name of the male reproductive part of the flower is stamen. Or we, sometimes it's also called andresium. And next is, this is a female reproductive part of the flower. The top part of the female reproductive part of the flower, which is called stigma. And then you will be able to see a long, elongated, slender-like portions. And this is simply called a style. And you will be able to see a bottom, a large portion. Sorry, you can play. 
bottom enlarged portion which is simply called ovary and this is the ovary inside the ovary ovule will be there yeah continue continue sir and this is a female reproductive part of the flower that means the female reproductive part of the flower which consists of stigma style and ovary inside the ovary there will be the ovule inside the ovule female germ cells or egg will be present and together all the structure are simply called the female reproductive part and the scientific name to represent the female reproductive part is pistil or carpal pistil or carpal and and their filament together constitute the male reproductive part of the flower and which is called stamen and sometimes it's also called androecium and in the case of female reproductive part of the flower pistil carpal gynecium these both terms are interchangeably used okay now we just completed the reproductive and non reproductive part of the flower so you can move on to the next animation before moving on to the next animation i will give you we need to thoroughly brush up the concept of pollination what do you mean by pollination what do you mean by pollination actually pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from the anther of the male reproductive part of the flower to the stigma stigma of the stigma of the flower okay i will say that again and pollination can be defined as it is a transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of a flower and pollination can be defined as two types this is not three four types only two types and which includes self-pollination as well as cross-pollination so you can play the animation regarding the self-pollination what do you mean by self-pollination if the pollens are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower same flower which is simply called which is okay one minute yeah now you will be able to see the structures i will explain that self pollination again if the pollen grains transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or different flower of the same plant which is simply called the self pollination yes sir you can play the animation yeah, pollen grains are transferred if the pollen, pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or from the anther to the stigma of the different flower of the same plant which is simply called the self-pollination. The next one is cross-pollination. So what do you mean by cross-pollination? So you can play the cross-pollination animation. What do you mean by cross-pollination? Tell me, tell me, show, tell me what do you mean by cross-pollination? Yes, cross-pollination can be uh, done uh, with the help of wind, insect, air, etc. And cross-pollination is, is, I will explain the cross-pollination. If the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the flower, of a flower of a different plant of the same kind which is simply called the cross pollination. I will repeat my sentence again. If the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of a different flower of the different plant of the same kind which is simply called the cross pollination. Now you can see the cross pollination by the insects or you can play that okay. Yeah you can see you will be able to see the cross pollination by the insects over here yeah cross pollination now we need to discuss about the after events of the cross pollination or if, even if it is cross pollination or self pollination we need to discuss about the events that occurs after the pollination event sorry you can you can disconnect and please play the next animation yeah here we go when the pollen lands on the stigma there will be the development of a tube tube like structure which is called pollen tube through which the male germ cell will be transferred into the ovary so you can play yeah you will be able to see the pollen germination and there will be the growth of uh, a tube like structure through which the germ cells or male germ cells male gamete will be transferred or delivered into the ovary uh, for the fertilization process and inside the ovary ovule will be there when they reaches into the ovule they will find to uh, fuse uh, with that of the egg cells or the female gamete or female germ cell present in the ovule okay sir that is enough and we will show the detailed animation regarding that pollination after the pollination events okay when the pollen lands on the stigma when the pollen lands on the stigma the pollen germination occurs on the stigma and there will be the growth of sir you can play there will be the growth of a tube like structure which is called pollen tube and through which uh, germ cells or male male germ cell male germ cell or male gamete will be transferred and in this animation the male germ cell is not transferred or male gamete is not transferred into the ovary but you should consider that the male germ cell or male gamete will be transferred or delivered into the ovary and finally into the egg cell which is present in the 
ovule. Okay, so that is enough. And after this fertilization, after the fertilization event, you know, the fusion of male and female gamete is simply called the fertilization. After the fertilization event, the zygote will be developed. Zygote will be developed. Uh, zygote will be developed, and zygote will be developed into embryo. And finally, the ovule develops into seed. Inside the seed, there will be the form. There will be the up. Uh, there will be uh, the because inside the seeds, inside the, after the ovule develop into seed, inside the seed you will be able to find out the embryo and after after and a fruit will also be formed from word. After the fertilization event, the fruit will be formed by our from our ovary. That means after the fertilization, the ovary develops into fruit. So these are the major events of the fertilization. After the fertilization, it's not the major events of the fertilization. After the event of fertilization, the ovary develops into fruit, while ovule develops into seed. At the same time, uh, after the fertilization, the zygote develops into embryo, and embryo will be enclosed or located in the seed. So these are the major processes and major events, and we already discussed all the concepts of the uh, question. And now I will show you how to label the diagram, and I will also show you the highlighted portions in the textbook. And these are the highlighted portions, and these portions must be in your examination seat, otherwise you will not be able to score full marks. That means in this question, they distributed it as uh, three marks. And if you are not highlight, if you are not writing any of the highlighted portion, you will not be able to get full marks. You will, you, you have to include the explanation part of the male and female reproductive system, followed by the pollen self pollination, cross pollination, and fertilization event. That is enough, and that is enough. If you are mentioning the post fertilization changes also, like cygo develops into embryo, and ovary develops into fruit, and ovule develops into seed, that will be an additional advantage. A for uh, getting marks. Okay, and this is the label the diagram. You should one minute, sorry, and you should draw this diagram or illustrate this diagram. And it is mandatory to mention pollen grain, stigma, male germ cell, pollen tube, ovary, followed by the female germ cells, and and you should uh, make a heading or you should give a heading as uh, germination of pollen on stigma. Okay, all the points will directly come from your textbook textbook reading is very essential i will show you what are the major portions to be highlighted in your textbook yeah i hope you took the screenshot yeah this is a diagrammatic representation and annotation is also needed uh, pollen brain stigma male germ cell pollen tube ovary and female germ cell all this part must be labeled and sir please remove the banner and you should give a heading it as germination of pollen on stigma and next we need to explain the part i already explained all this part through our animation and this explanation part is also needed and stamen we know stamen is a male reproductive part and it produces pollen grains and we know the ovary ovary is also a female reproductive part and ovary connects ovules and each ovules has an egg cell and pollen need to be transferred from the stamen to the stigma and we already discussed about the self-pollination difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination as well if this transfer of the pollen occurs in the same flower it is refers to a self-pollination on other hand if the pollen is transferred from one flower to another it is not as cross-pollination yeah after the pollen lands on the suitable stigma it has to reach the female germ cells which are in ovary for the fertilization event for this a tube will be a tube growth we will be observed we will be observed and this tube is simply called the pollen tube okay this tube seed is simply called the pollen tube when after the pollen lands on the suitable stigma it has to reach the female germ cells which are in the ovary for this a pollen tube grows out of the pollen grain and travels through the style to reach the ovary Okay, the male germ cell or male gamete produced by pollen grains fuses with the female gamete present in the ovule. This fusion of germ cell, which is simply called the fertilization, and fertilization gives the zygote. And after the fertilization, or followed by fertilization, the zygote divides, zygote divides several times to form an embryo. To form an embryo within the ovule. That is the first event after the fertilization. And second one is the ovule develops a turf cord and is gradually converted into seed. That means after the fertilization, ovule develops into seed. Ovule develops into seed. And next one is after the fertilization, ovary, ovary grows rapidly and ripens to form a fruit. 
and meanwhile the petal sepal stamen style and stigma may shrivel and fall off and all these points are very essential now we just discussed the three more questions from the category of the flowering plants of how do organisms reproduce so stay tuned for 90 plus my tuition now and i will be back with more interesting keys based and more expected questions that we can expect in our 10th grade cbc 2024 examination don't forget to subscribe and watch our video and follow up all for all the videos we will be there and go to hit the side good night bye bye my dear friends